intercession and word of empowerment broadcast. I am your host, Apostle Deron Shea Zorn with Divine Order Restoration Ministries International. And we are restoring the order of God, one life, one body, one nation at a time. And it is such an esteemed honor to be in the presence of God with you in this 42-day International Spiritual Growth Campaign. Amen. Where we are walking in the truth of God's word. Amen. As we're standing on his promises, even for such a time as this, that God would have us in a place that he is pulling everything that's out of alignment. He is bringing it back. Amen. Into one state so that, amen, our lives will begin to align with his word of truth, amen, in the majestic name of Jesus, so that we can walk in the manifestations of the blessings of God, amen, in the name of Jesus. So we just bless God in this place, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, glory to God. We thank God for tonight and what he is going to release in um, in this place that we may be blessed for such a time as this um, dynamic people of God. We thank God, amen, for the Holy Spirit just coming in this place and saturating us. We are coming out of the book of Genesis on tonight. So you guys go ahead and grab your Bible. Amen. Um, glory to God. Uh, God has a definitely powerful woman of God that is going to come forth. Amen. Um, amen. In the spirit of truth. Amen. I'm releasing what thus says the Lord so that we may be empowered for such a time as this. For such a time as this, amen. Um, glory to God, we're coming out of Genesis on tonight, chapter 31 and 32. So you guys get ready, get ready, get ready for uh, the release of the Lord on tonight and have yourselves um, prepared. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, glory. Glory, glory unto God in this place. Amen. In the majestic name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We are going to uh, have our agenda as followed on tonight. And we will do um, a song of worship, a prayer. And then the woman of God will come forth. We do introduction. And then the powerful woman of God will come forth. Amen. I'm speaking decreeing, declaring, amen, um, the word of the Lord upon our life that will break strongholds, amen, and set us absolutely free, amen, in the majestic name of Jesus, glory be unto the Lord in this place, in Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen, thank you, Jesus.
Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory be unto your holy and righteous name in this place, O holy King of Israel. You are Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end of all things. And we bless you in this place that we can trust you, O mighty God, in the majestic name of Jesus. We thank you that we can trust you, O God, with every essence of our being. Hallelujah. We thank you in this place that you are forever faithful unto us. And we bless your holy and righteous name. Hallelujah. O gracious King, for you are absolutely amazing. And there is surely no one like you, God. Father, as we stand in the gap for your people around the world, throughout the nations, O gracious King, we ask, O God, that you would open up heaven, O God, and that you would begin to stir up in the atmosphere a spirit, O God, of readiness, O God, so that we would be prepared in our heart, our minds, and our souls souls, the very essence of our beings, to do the work in which you have called forth in us, almighty God, that we won't be slack or lack, oh God, or slothfulness in anything, oh God, that you prompt unto us, that you call a becking unto us, almighty King, in the majestic name of Jesus, have your way in this place, oh God, in our lives as you mature us around the world throughout the nations in the majestic name of Jesus. We thank you, oh God, for the preparation that you have already started in us since, oh God, being released from the womb of our mother in the name of Jesus, that we may fulfill the very purpose in which you have called forth in our lives that because you are the great orchestrator oh god in the name of jesus and we thank you god that we would be a people that will embrace oh father what it is that you have spoken unto us oh god and the journey, the road that we have to travel so that we can become absolutely everything that you have called forth in our lives. Oh, gracious King, we bless you in this place that on tonight that you will break every stronghold of the adversary that will cause us to be lazy, oh God, slothful, procrastinate, hesitate, doubt, oh God, not move in your word of truth. That every shackle is being broken right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you, God, that even, oh God, as you begin to move upon us, oh Oh God, that, oh God, that even in the places that we are stuck, oh God, that, Lord God, that your people will begin to move in your very glory, no longer bound, no longer shackled, no longer chained, oh God, because your power resonate, oh God, on the inside of us. In the name of Jesus, let your spirit rise up in mankind on tonight, oh God, hallelujah, and stir us up, oh God. God, in this place, uh, that we will begin, oh God, to be cultivators, uh, oh God, for the fruit, oh God, that you are calling forth uh, out of our lives uh, in the majestic name of Jesus, uh, so that we will no longer be delayed uh, in that, in, in the work of our hand, uh, oh God, in the name of Jesus, uh, that we will no longer be delayed, oh God, in obtaining the promise, oh God, completing a starting and completing assignments uh, that you have called forth in our lives. In the majestic name of Jesus, for such a time as this, almighty God, Lord God, hallelujah, prepare our mind to come into a place of oneness, oh God, with your holy word of truth, almighty King, so that, oh God, 
hallelujah, so that, oh God, that you may see the manifestation, oh God, of the very thought that you have toward each and every last one of us in the majestic name of Jesus. Have your way, oh God. We thank you that even right now that you're contending with those things that are contending against us, oh God, in the name of Jesus, that you are knocking down the enemy battle line, oh God. You're causing giants to fall, our enemies to scatter, mountains, oh God, to be laid flat, cricket rage. Oh God, may straight on our behalf, oh God, in the name of Jesus. We thank you for a strategic training, oh God, so that we may rise up in the fullness of your very word. Nothing missing, nothing lacking, oh God, perfect in our entirety. In the majestic name of Jesus, have your way, oh God in the lives of your people around the world, throughout the nation. Father, we thank you for the speaker that's getting ready to come forth. We thank you, oh God, that you anoint her fresh, anew, oh God, and that even, oh God, as the word is released out of her mouth, uh, that it falls on the fertileness of our hearts. Uh, oh God, that your word may prosper in our lives, uh, individually and collectively, uh, in the majestic name of Jesus. Uh, we thank you, God, hallelujah, for that in which you have placed in her her belly to release, oh God, into, into nations, oh God, to set the captives free in the majestic name of Jesus. We thank you, God, for honoring us on tonight, oh Holy King, with your presence almighty god we thank you lord god that as you've been in the midst of us oh god that you've searched our hearts and that you have searched our minds in this place hallelujah and that oh god that you have made the way so that for even the release on tonight in the majestic name of jesus we thank you for dispatching worrying and ministering angels on our behalf and we thank you we can consider all things done as this prayer is being covered in the blood of the precious lamb of God, who is your phenomenal son, our dynamic savior, outstanding brother, loving and caring friend, who is Jesus Christ. Amen, amen, and amen. To God be the glory. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory be unto God. Amen. And we just don't want to delay, amen, this powerful word that's getting ready to come forth. Hallelujah. Glory to God. For such a time as this. Amen. For such a time as this. Amen. I am absolutely um, excited to introduce um, the woman of God that's coming before us on tonight um she is a solid believer in christ jesus as a crisis caseworker she witnessed the devastation devastating effects of abuse and neglect of youth the author also serves as a youth pastor for the house of deliverance church in athens texas pastor Hagar Patrick and the late Reverend William E. Patrick provided a strong spiritual foundation as her pastors and as her parents. Serving as a youth pastor, she became involved and mentored fatherless youth adults. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, young adults and their families. She also served as the praise and worship leader, secretary, and community outreach coordinator. She has worn many hats in the ministry. She also has a heart for the ministry of helps in the local church. Um, she is an author, and as the author, she feels that God called her to minister healing to people of all ages as jesus taught in parables she presents the gospel in a language that the youth and unchurched can understand she graduated from sam houston state university with a bachelor in psychology the author enjoys her family church and beautiful sunny 
Texas days. She is an East Texas native, but currently resides in Louisville, Texas. She has over 18 years of professional experience working with all types of people. She has worked as a mental health crisis case manager, a child abuse investigator, a foster home case manager, and a personal care attendant. She has been a hands-on person working in the ministry at church and in her professional career. She is the author of two books, her novel, The Conversion of the Thug, and Coffee Time with Daddy. Um, the author wrote of her transitional, her, I'm sorry, her transition from rape victim to overcomer in her first book, Coffee Time with Daddy. She chronicles her journey of learning to hear God's voice in all circumstances, even in dark times. She also encouraged the reader to respond to God's effects to lead us around trouble, but he restores us even with his little lambs become entrapped in Satan's webs. She gives step-by-step -step instructions on how to overcome the darkest time times by using God's word as a roadmap to healing. After getting married and waiting 10 years to become a mother, she experienced the death of her daughter right before birth. She had to depend on God to restore her through many prayers counseling, and God's word. She knows from experience that God will restore everything the enemy stole. The Lord restored her with two beautiful little girls who love to sing and worship the Lord. She also travels to ministry to those who need a word from God. She is an encourager, a psalmist, a motivational speaker, I want to introduce a man uh, to us on tonight, none other than Minister Herod Patrick Barron. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Um, dynamic woman of God, you have the platform in Jesus' name. His grace, and I thank God for everyone who's tuned in tonight, and I pray you will be blessed and hear what the Lord has put on my heart to share with you. Uh, we're talking about being led by the Spirit. We're talking about being ready uh, when God activates you to whatever he's called you to do. Uh, the Lord had given me uh, a word at the end of 2018 to let me know that he was about to activate those of us, and I say us who are, we've kind of been in the background. Uh, you know how you've been, you've been lifting weights and you're getting prepared in the gym, but maybe you haven't got out there in front of people yet, but you've been in the back room fasting and praying and serving God and worshiping behind closed doors. But there's a season where God takes you from behind closed doors to the forefront, and that's also on our subject of readiness. It's kind of like the Army Reserves. They're called upon when needed, but they're, they're active, they're training, they're doing their time, they're just getting prepared in case they're called upon, in case they're needed. And as you know, in times of war, they call in the active reserves, the retired, whoever they can get that has any knowledge of what we need to do as a nation, they're activated, they're called upon at any time, but they have to be prepared. And that's what the Lord let me know, that in 2019, he was going to activate those who's been in secret, who's been worshiping in secret, who's been, who's been serving leadership with a good heart, not serving bitter. Now, I've served bitter, and I think probably most of us may have, whether we admit it or not, where we felt uh, we were forced to serve, but all that was working out your character. And those people that's been serving, and praying and fasting, doing all that behind closed doors without any fanfare, 
without anyone calling your name out. You're just serving God because you love him. It's about time that you're going to come from the background to the forefront. It's like that. And, and the word is, I guess I'm looking for is the word shift. Some people will be taken down and others God is raising up. And then that's up to God who he takes down. It's up to him who he raises up. But we just have to be ready when he calls. So that's the word he gave me. And I was so excited by that word. Because a lot of times we say, well, when is it my time? When is it my season for whatever you really believe in God for? And uh, the word readiness means the state of being fully prepared for something. It also means the willingness to do something. It also means prepared or available for service. And I started to think, Lord, have I ever really been ready for anything? Not to say to have been half prepared or almost prepared. It says been fully prepared for something. And I honestly couldn't think of a time that I've been fully prepared. I said, oh, Lord. <laughs> so I need to work on that myself. There's a lot of times I thought I was ready. Uh, 2016, I'll give you an example. I thought I was ready for ministry. Uh, my apostle had talked with me. He was ready to ordain me. Uh, I walked in the prophetic, and, and, and he was ready to just ordain me officially uh, to be one of the prophets at the church and to really get in there and serve. And, and I've been years and years just laboring behind the background and, and walking in deliverance and, and ministering and just, you know, serving. And so he was ready to elevate me. And I was like, oh, Lord, I thank you. Finally, I'm ready. It's my time. It's my season. And I really thought I was ready. And something happened that same year to one uh, to someone that I love. Now, me being full of the Holy Ghost, being a prophetess, being a minister, being a writer, something happened that had never happened in my life. And I found myself, the woman of God found herself planning to kill somebody. And I don't mean uh, figuratively. I mean, the enemy told me, you catch him in the act. And you go and take them out of here. And I planned to get a concealed handgun license. I knew exactly the process. I worked with the court system. I knew I'd walk right out of there, uh, right out of court, because I knew just what to say. And I said, okay. And I had planned to do it. That exact weekend, uh, my mother and uh, my sisters were going to, um, there's this, uh, I'll just say the man of God, uh, we went to one of his conferences. And I said, okay, I'll go. And the Lord knew what was in my heart. I hadn't told anybody that when I got back home, it was going to be on and popping with that uh, with that handgun because I was going to take care of business. Got up there, and um, the man of God starts start playing, and he said, he said, I'm going to call out some things. And if you start manifesting, he said, we're going to pull you out, and we're going to get up here, we're going to lay hands on you, and you're going to get delivered. And I pointed my hand towards all the people that God's going to touch. Lord, just, Lord, they need deliverance so bad. Lord, heal them, touch them, deliver them, Jesus. Everybody but me. And I'm just all prepared to pray for them people who, who, really, <laughs> who really need deliverance. And he got to calling out demons of anger and rage. I said, uh-oh. I, I tell you what, we're okay until someone calls out our demons. When when they call your name, I call out the spirit that's been working with you. That's when you know for sure, okay, Lord, we got some work to do. So I'm all prepared to point my hand toward all the folks that need deliverance. He called out anger. He called out rage. He called out deliverance. Uh, uh, not, you know, he called anger, rage, and bitterness. And, and he said, you were molested as a child. And I was. Uh, I lost my virtue at age seven. So I've been through quite, quite a bit. He got to going down the line of the, the spirits that were still plaguing me. And I'll tell you what, I was prepared to pray for them when I tell you I got to hollering and sweating and crying, and I could not, I could not contain it. It was such a deep uh, uh, cry inside of me. I, I never experienced that before. And I just, I would start falling back, and they see me, they pulled me right out of that seat and took me right onto the altar. I was like, oh, Lord, not me. I'm from a deliverance ministry, not me. I've delivered other people. I've laid hands and cast the devil out of other people. And my God, he done came around and got in me. Good Lord. They put me right on the altar. I was crying and weeping. And when I tell you the power of God got on me and I fell straight out. I'm not one that falls out every Sunday. But honey, that, the, honey, the power of God hit me and I fell straight out. I fell on somebody. They just rolled me on over. <laughs> I was like, okay. 
They rolled me on over to the side. And when I tell you I got delivered of that spirit, I got, and I mean a deep down deliverance. And y'all, sometimes we haven't experienced a deep down deliverance. Sometimes you, know, you may go to the altar and you cry and you pray, oh, Lord. But I mean, now I'm from the holiness church. When I'm talking about deliverance, holiness, and church of God in Christ, they believe in laying hands on you and seeing the devil come out of you and you get delivered and set free. When I grew up, they didn't let you walk out the door if you still, if they thought you still had something still working with you. They took care of it, blessed all hands on you, and they rolled down on the floor with you to get, to get that spirit out. And I appreciate that. And I, I got up from that floor delivered. Set free. I didn't want to kill nobody anymore. And when I got back home and started trying to get a gun, I packed up my bag and I had to go. But at least somebody was alive. And I had to let that go out of my heart. And so my point was, I thought I was ready for ministry. I thought I had already matured in the Lord and he's going to elevate me. Praise God. But the Lord knew there was still something in my heart that needed to be taken care of. So sometimes the Lord, he'll, he'll call you back and say, hey, I know you think you're ready. I know it's your season. I know you're going to go win the loss, but honey, let me, let me go back and deal with this right here in your spirit. Let me deal with this that you have never let go, that you've never dealt with, that you just gloss over, you know, that you, you just prayed over. You, oh, it's okay, Lord, I give it to you in Jesus' name. And sometimes it's so deep. It takes a while to really deal with the pain and the anguish that's just sitting in our heart. You know, the, the devil doesn't just leave you. Jesus drove him out of people. He said he drove them out the temple. He, he drove them out, kicked them out. The devil just unpacked up and leave on his own. You have to drive him out. You have to cast him out. He doesn't willingly go, but by the power of the name of Jesus, you have to command him to leave, and then he must go. But he will stay there like a squatter on land that he does not own until you kick him out. You got to call in spiritual law enforcement, which is the blood of Jesus and the name of Jesus, and kick the devil up out of your spirit where he's just been sitting for years causing sickness and disease and frustration and bitterness and confusion. Uh uh. That's why it's good to be led by the Spirit, honey. Once the Holy Ghost gets in there and starts rearranging your life, dealing with your issues from the inside out, and then you are renewed and rejuvenated and restored. So I wanted to share that about how I thought I was ready. And I found out I was not. And the Lord dealt with me. And I thank God I finally crossed over that. where I needed to deal with that from years ago. It had just built up, and the Lord delivered me. And so another situation where uh, we're talking about readiness, I don't know if you have any football fans, but I found this very interesting. Uh, one of the best, arguably the greatest um, football player is Tom Brady, the quarterback of the New England Patriots. Awesome, awesome, awesome. He's old in football years. He's probably like 40, but in football years, that's old. But he's still just awesome. He was a backup, unknown backup quarterback for this guy named Hugh Bledsoe, who was the greatest. And, um, this is about being ready, being prepared. Tom Brady was unknown, backed up. No one knew where, who he was. His rookie, Drew Bledsoe, was just quarterback, awesome worldwide. When he got hurt in 2001, when he got hurt, his backup, who nobody knew, filled in, and Drew Bledsoe never got his job back because Tom Brady was prepared, he was ready, and he's been the greatest pretty much ever since. So he was ready, he was prepared, he was the backup. But my thing is, when the Lord calls us, are we going to be ready? And I got to thinking, are you someone's replacement in the kingdom? Now, that's a, that's a powerful thought. Are you someone's replacement in the kingdom? Is there somebody right now that God is dealing with to get their stuff together? He knows they may or may not. And if they don't, as Bishop Jake says, you can be replaced. <laughs> So we think sometimes we think, hey, it's all on me. God's using me. But honey, you can be replaced. And to borrow from, from the bishop, there's someone under a bridge that can outsing you, that can outplay you, that's smarter than you, that's more beautiful than you. Whatever you think you got going on, you can be replaced. Even in the kingdom of God, 
there are people, as we know, that are, are, are doing miracle signs and wonders, and they're out there, and they seem to be okay, but God knows what's happening behind closed doors. And you and I both know the Lord will deal with you like he has me behind closed doors and give you time to get your stuff together. And if you just won't get it together and you're causing other people to stumble, I think that's when God has a real problem with it. When you cause one of his little ones to be led astray, the Bible says it's better that you would have never been born. And I do not want to be in that position. So is God dealing with somebody right now to get they to get it together? And if they get removed, are you are you already in position? Are you already prayed up and, and walking in deliverance and, and got all the bitterness taken care of and got all the wrath taken care of? Are you prepared just in case you are someone's replacement in the kingdom? Are you ready? If they call you to fill in, are you going to come with the anointing, with the glory, with the power, with whatever gift God put in you? Are you ready? Right there, if they call you right on the spot, are you ready? For service, are you available for service? And I think sometimes we're so tied up. And I know, and God knows, I had been tied up for years in in a relationship, tied up. It was a marital relationship, but just tied up and bound up, bound up, never free to really obey and serve God. And when the Lord calls us, are we going to be available? We dealt with all that stuff, and I want to be ready, and I want us to be ready for service. So that's my introduction. We're going to go to Genesis 31, and I'm going to try to tie this all together about being led by the Spirit. These, this is very interesting, and we're going to hit up on some stuff tonight, and I hope that y'all can really uh, get into this. Uh, this was a scripture that I hadn't read too often, but I was aware of it, but I'm glad I got to study it. In Genesis 31, uh, we're going to pick up in verse 1. Where Jacob, as you know, uh, married two sisters, Rachel and Leah, and their father, who was pretty much a crook, uh, a charlatan, as they would call it, uh, made Jacob work for all these years for these girls, and he was cheating them and wouldn't pay them his wages and just just being a terrible uh, father-in-law. And so, in verse thirty, uh, chapter thirty-one, verse one, and he heard the words of Laban's son saying, Jacob hath taken away all that was our father's, and of that which was our father's hath he gotten all this glory, which means he's getting all of our daddy's attention. And Jacob beheld the countenance of Laban, and behold, it was not toward him as before. And the Lord said unto Jacob, Return unto the land of thy fathers and to thy kindred, and I will be with thee. My first point is, the Holy Spirit will lead you. First of all, he will let you know that something is up. Now, when Jacob looked, he, he, he was like, I can't explain it, but Laban, he doesn't look at me the same as he used to. In verse 2, and Jacob beheld the countenance of Laban, and behold, it was not toward him as before. It's like something has changed in our relationship. He doesn't treat me the same. He doesn't look at me the same way. There's something going on with him, but he didn't know what it was. And the Holy Spirit will let you know that something is up. You may not can explain this this feeling. I call it the inward witness. You may not uh, know what's going on. You may not can put your finger on it. But you may walk into a room and just feel something is off. And maybe after a phone call or maybe maybe meeting someone, they look great. It, that everything went well. But the Holy Spirit will let, will let you know mm, something's not quite right with this situation, with this person. Uh, maybe your your child comes comes to you with some kind of great plan, and they're talking fast and talking you into it, and uh, their parents are going to be there. It's going to be okay. And the Holy Spirit will let you know, as a mother, as a parent, uh, something's not right. They're not telling you all the truth about that. That's the inward witness. And, and I know about the inward witness, and I have not always listened to the inward witness. When I was uh, kidnapped in 1998, my senior year in college, my parents were both pastors, and I always depended on mother and dad to always hear God for me. We grew up in the Holiness Church. And so we, I, the Holy Ghost, you know, my mom was filled. And, I mean, daddy filled. I mean, you know, we the whole hands laid deliverance, the whole situation. But I never really heard God for myself. I always depended on them to pray for me and hear God. 
I was in a situation away at college where I needed to hear God for myself. Mama wasn't there. Daddy wasn't there. It was only me and all the training that they had put inside of me is all that I had. I was filled with the Holy Spirit, but he wasn't leading me. I didn't allow him to lead my decision making. Let's put it like that. He was in there, but I didn't really listen. I didn't really fully understand being led by the Spirit. And so when I found myself in a situation meeting a young man that, that seemed okay on the outside, went to church that night, shook the pastor's hand that night, and about three hours later I found myself with a gun up to the back of my head, him telling me I'm going to kill you, I'm going to rape you, and I'm going to throw your body in a ditch, and I'm going to mess you up, and they won't even recognize you or find your body. And the look on his face, he meant every word. But leading up to that whole night, I kept having a feeling that something was wrong, something was off. And I couldn't explain it. And what my part was, I kept on saying, well, you know, it's okay. Or I'm just feeling this way and just kind of downplaying it. And I, and I have told other young ladies after my experience, stop downplaying these feelings that you have. This is the Lord leading you. Even young ladies and young men that are not even saved, the Lord is merciful. He will still even give you a warning of some kind. And like Jesus said, it's not my will that any should perish. That's the saved and the unsaved. He reigns on the just and the unjust. So God always gives you some kind of warning, some kind of sign. It may be a feeling like, you know, I really shouldn't go. But how many times have we overrode those feelings and go anyway? Oh, that's just my mind. Or when you have a mind to turn left and you go right and wind up getting a ticket, which has happened to me several times. Just, just simple things. It's been led. That mind, hey, go this way, or, you know, don't go there today. Just because you've been invited don't mean you have to go all the time. And so I, I kept feeling that feeling, but I kept on overriding it. I didn't understand. The Lord was telling me, hey, this is not it. Hey, you know, go ahead on and leave. This is not safe. It's like warning signals, danger, danger, danger. And how many times do we override or have we overridden those danger signs? And we just didn't get it because we're just not in tune with the Holy Spirit. And I thank God that the Lord did wind up saving my life through that whole horrible situation. I am alive to tell about it. And my lesson from that was learn to listen to the inward witness. Listen to it. And the Lord always does his part. I can never be angry at God. Lord, why did you let this happen to me? Because one thing I can tell anybody, the Lord always does his part. He 100% of the time. Everything that happens to us in life, he always does his part. Whether we get in a bad relationship, a bad marriage, I guarantee you something you had an inkling or maybe came from another person. And sometimes we don't want to run it by anybody because we know they're not going to agree with our decision. So we just don't say anything about it because we want to do what we want to do. But sometimes if we listen, even if we don't like it, just listen. My mother told me, if I tell you something you don't like, you listen, you chew on it, and then you put it on the shelf. If you don't think it's God, you put it on the shelf, and then you're going to need to, you're gonna need to pull it off the shelf in a little bit because it was the Lord. So don't just throw it out. Just kind of put it to the side and say, okay, Lord, this is you, you know, this manifesto, or whatever. But the Lord would use people to talk to you, to tell you the honest truth, whether you want to hear it or not, good, bad, or ugly, give me your opinion. This is kind of off topic topic, but we all need that person in our life to challenge us, uh, especially, you know, us who are the people of faith who, who hear from God and we get words from the Lord. We are human, and sometimes we think it's God and it's not God, and sometimes we thought it wasn't God and it was him, because our human mind gets to work in there and he trying to explain everything. So it's good to run it by someone, and you need to be strong enough to hear from your elder in the Lord to say, honey, I know you think that's the Lord, but uh, you may need to check that revelation, you know, <laughs> or does that line up with the word? You need to go back and restudy that. And if we full of pride, we're going to get mad at first and get offended. But as your elder in the Lord or someone who can check you spiritually to say, honey, I don't know about that one. You need to go back and study that one. Or someone to say, let me pray about that. And, and let's come into agreement. Let's see if this is the Lord or whatever. So it's okay. If it's really God, it's going to hold up. If you trust your leadership like you should, or if you trust your spiritual checker like you should, you're going to want to run things by them. Maybe not everything, 
But really important decisions are things that you really believe you heard from the Lord that are life changing. Just run it by your spiritual uh, uh, leader or your spiritual your prayer partner, someone else who's spiritually minded. There's safety in numbers, and as the Bible says, in the multitude of counselors, there's safety. Just run it by them, and um, all will be well. And if it's not well, hey, y'all can get together. If you can, if you can stand correction, which we should all be able to stand correction. I've had to be corrected many times when I just knew I was right. I knew it was the Lord. I was just as wrong as my mama says. It's two left shoes. It was like that was not God. And I had to be corrected, and I, I had to take it. Okay, Lord, I thank you. But next time, I'm going to weigh this out against the word, because that was not you, and I'm so sorry. We need to be mature enough to handle that, to handle that. And really, y'all, that makes us stronger. It makes us uh, listen to spiritual weights. We, we should be able to take some stuff. Now, let's go to verse 13. I mean, to get off topic, but this is very good. Uh, Genesis 31, verse 13. So, well, let me just kind of back up. What happened was, the Lord had already told Jacob, okay, you know, this guy, your father-in-law, he, he's, he's not doing you good here. So you go on and go back home to your daddy and his people pretty much is the modern term. Go ahead on and go back home. And God said, I'll be with you. So, you know, Jacob, he took his two wives and all his kids and all this stuff. And he just snuck out. He didn't even tell them he was leaving. He just left. And so verse 13 uh, God told him, he said, I am the God of Bethel, where you anointed the pillar, and where thou vowedest a vow unto me. God said, now arise, get thee out from this land, and return unto thy kindred. My point here is, is be ready to move when God says move. The Holy Spirit is so precise. The Spirit of truth, as the Bible calls him in John, he will lead you. He will guide you. God is so specific. If you really want to know, he will tell you what city to move to. He will tell you, Lord, is this the right person for me or not? He'll say, uh-uh, no, ma'am, keep stepping. Or, yes, this is the person I've assigned to you. we got to have an open heart and be willing to listen. But God is so precise. Even when God told Noah to build the ark, God gave him specific measurements for the ark. He told him what kind of wood to use. I mean, God was so specific. In his direction of how to build the ark to the saving of Noah's family. Now, if God did that for Noah, I believe the Holy Spirit will do that for you. He will give you detailed, specific direction of where to go, what to do, what to say. That's how precise God is. Now, we're going to get to something really good in verse 19. So we know that Jacob took his, his wife. And they, they headed on back to where he was from. This is what happened in verse 19. And Laban went, hold on, I think I'm sorry about that. Well, what happened was Jacob's wife, Rachel, stole her father's idol. And she left. She went with her husband. But my point is be ready to leave some things behind. Rachel went on with Jacob. You know, I love him. This is my husband. We got, you know, here we're, going, we're all going together to a new plan. I'm ready to go. But she took something from her past. Now, you leaving, but why are you taking your father's idols? In verse 19, and Laban went to share his sheep, and Rachel has stolen the images that her father, the images that were her father. She took her father's idols. Now, wait a minute. Now, you're going to another land. So why are you going to reach back and take your father's idol? And as you know, um, now I don't know if Jacob had told his wife that he serves the living God, not the dead God that serves idols. So evidently she didn't get the memo that we don't worship idols in this house because she took her father's idols with her. And as you know, God does not play when it comes to idolatry. I'm going to skip over right quick. To Deuteronomy 7 and 26 to tell you why God said, do not take no idols. Deuteronomy 7 and 26. When I read this scripture, this changed my life. I'm sorry, at verse 25. The graven images of their gods shall ye burn with fire. He's talking about idols here. Thou shalt not desire the silver or gold that is on them, 
nor take it unto thee. You see, she took the idol, she took it with her. God said, lest thou be snared therein, for it is an abomination to the Lord thy God. This is what put me on the floor. Neither shall thou bring an abomination into thine house. I was like, uh-oh, lest thou be a cursed thing like it. If you bring it to your house, God said, you're going to be a curse just like the thing you brought in. He says, but thou shalt utterly detest it, and thou shalt utterly abhor it, for it is a cursed thing. God does not play when it comes to idols, adultery. And, uh, man, she took it. She took it with her. Not only, not only did she take it with her, when her father finally caught up with her and Jacob and the whole family, she uh, sat on the idols so that her father wouldn't find them. He was looking all around the tent trying to find his idols. Now, here's the thing. Jacob said, look, we ain't got your idols. We don't want your idols. We don't do that here. He had no idea that his own wife had taken the idols and was sitting on them, literally sitting on the idol. God already said, if you take these idols, you're going to become a cursing like it. And just a side note, how many things do we have in our house, have we had or have in our house, that are accursed things? I have a prime example. Someone in my house, not now, in the past, uh, all of a sudden, we start having black birds uh, come to our window. Uh, we had this tree outside of our apartment, and it was, I mean, black birds just filled every day coming against our window. We had cats. No, no one else in the apartment had this problem. Locusts on our door. Um, now, look, we are believers in Christ Jesus, and the uh, some says no plague should come to our dwelling. But listen, there was a plague coming to our dwelling. Cats were screaming right only at our window. Unusual things happening in the house. And I thought to the Lord, okay, Lord, what is going on here? The Lord said, move that couch. And I moved my couch, and I looked under the couch. I saw there was just a video of something else, you know, maybe a family gathering. So I put it in the DVD player, and it was not the family gathering. It was a family on there, but it sure wasn't mine. And uh, it was some things, and then he said, look in the closet. I was in the closet. I found stacks and stacks of pornography. When I say stacks, I mean stacks uh, under the couch, in the hallway, in the closet, in suitcases, uh, uh, hidden all throughout my house. Now, you wonder why there was blackbirds coming to my door, cats hollering at my door, why we had locusts on our door, because we had taken, well, not we, someone else had brought in the accursed thing into our home. And Jesus, God already said, if you bring it to your house, you're going to become a curse like it. And there are certain things we have in our house that represent evil, such as some, uh, some people like to collect dragons or owls. Those are spirits. Those represent spirits of darkness. Owls love darkness. Dragons represent, as we know, the Bible calls Satan the great dragon. So things like dragons, owls, uh, creatures of, of the night, dark things, uh, uh, a lot of black panthers. This one lady that I uh, was a mental health patient of mine, she had black panthers from wall to wall. She was obsessed with them. And she wondered why she had all this moving all around in her house when there was no one there. And that woman was not crazy, and I knew it. But I was unable to explain to her <laughs> that, honey, you, you have invited the devil right on into your house because you were setting up shock with all these uh, dark images. And, as, you know, she was not a believer and just didn't believe that kind of thing. And so we can have things into our house. Rachel brought her father's idols into her home. And here's the thing. When Jacob told his father-in-law, whoever has these idols will die. If you find them, whoever has them is going to die. He didn't even know that his own wife was sitting right on, on her father's idols. And do you know what happened? She died in childbirth. Um. I guess it was a few years later when she had her last child, Benjamin. She died in childbirth. So we missed this. So my other point is be ready to change your words. In 2019, Jacob spoke a curse on his own wife, and he didn't even know it. But I'm, I can't really put it on Jacob because she was cursed when she took the idols. So, but he said whoever has them 
they're going to die. He said, but, but before me and all these people, make a witness. Whoever has his idols are going to die. And that's just who died was his wife. And we missed it. I missed that point. So I reread it. And I said, oh, my goodness. So be ready to change your words to 2019. We're going to stop speaking negative and and. Oh, I'm sick. I'm ugly. Or I, I'm not smarter. Man, this is never going to work out for me. And I found myself a few weeks ago saying something very, uh, um, it was not positive. I was just frustrated. And, and I said, it seems like to me you have to go rob a bank to get on the news right here, to get any attention. I was doing a project and couldn't get any attention for it, trying to help people. And no one was interested uh, <laughs> in this side of town. No newspaper, no nothing. And I found myself saying that, and my sister said, don't say that. She said, no, you don't have to rob no bank to get no attention. She said, the Lord will open doors for you. And I said, you know what? Thank you for correcting me. See, I got a checker right here. She said, and I said, thank you for telling me that. You're right. That's not true. I don't need to say that. Because there are people on the news that do stuff good. And as a, and many of you know, if you're a prophet or you see ahead of time, sometimes we think something is for now, and we, we try to do it now. And doesn't work out. It doesn't mean that it wasn't the Lord. Maybe it's just not the time for that. We have that stuff too, you know. Do you see ahead of time? As a prophet, you're going to see ahead of time. And we say, oh, praise God, it's, it's right now. We're ready to do it now. And then it doesn't happen. And then we get we get faint-hearted. But be encouraged. It doesn't mean that wasn't God. Maybe it just wasn't the right timing. But if God showed it to you, he will bring it to pass. So don't worry about it. Maybe that if you try to those good that you at least stepped out on faith and put it into action, at least God knows he can trust you with it. So be encouraged by that. At least you stepped out on it. If it didn't quite work out in that season, okay, Lord, well, hey, let's go back to the drawing board. And in the next season, Lord, is this the time? And since the Holy Spirit will lead you and guide you, you'll feel that inner witness to go, hey, it's the season, it's the time. And, and you'll be right in step with the Holy Spirit. So don't get ahead of them. But let's be right in step with them. And so verse 20, this is, uh, I hope you all are enjoying this. Um, We're going to go to actually chapter 32 because I'm doing Genesis 31 and 32, trying to walk through this. um, Walk through this word, y'all. Chapter 32, verse 1. Now, after they done left, Laban is like, okay, y'all can go in and go. I'm not going to bother you. You don't bother me. So they made a covenant together that they would not harm each other. And Laban was able to hug his daughters and say, okay, you know, I love you. And and go on about your business, all is well. And y'all know what this brings me to one of the points. We do need the blessing of our parents, whether it's your natural parents or your spiritual parents. We need the blessing of our parents when we're moving forward and going on our way. And uh, if you feel called by the Lord to venture out, and go forth in ministry. My mother always said this, don't leave, don't leave, or my father too, don't leave in a bad way because you meant to come back. And if you come back, you're going to be mighty embarrassed if you left, being all smart and sassy and just left and flounced on out of there. I know what God called me to do. <laughs> I know I'm a prophet. I'm a sent to the nation. And you probably are, but that may not be the time for it. You may need a little more mentoring and grooming, and you may need some more deliverance for you get out there underneath that covering. And so our spiritual parents, our natural parents, God put them there for our protection and for our uh, to help grow us up in the Lord. And, yeah, you, you go through some hard stuff. They need to tell you some hard stuff so you can have a thick skin. In ministry, you've got to have a thick skin. You've got to. You're not going to make it because you will be rejected like Jesus. You will be laughed out. They're going to say you're crazy. And so you need thick skin to preach this gospel. And so Laban, he, he blessed his daughters. Joseph finally fixed up. He snuck off before with, with the man's daughters, and he didn't appreciate it. The man caught up with him. They argued about it. And anyway, they made up, they made a covenant, and he said, okay, all is well. Go ahead on. You take my daughter, y'all go ahead on. And see, he left the right way. We got to leave some situations, leave the right way. If you still caught just talk to your, your elder, your leader, your parents. Do it the right way. If, if it's God, it's going to be okay. If, you know, if I'm talking about good leadership, not the controlling, vindictive kind, but I mean good godly leadership that you know you have. Lead the right way. And you can always 
come back if there's an open door, though, an uh, open door to come back. Just leave the right way. Uh, chapter 32, verse 1. Uh, and Jacob went on his way, and the angels, of, the angels of God met him. And when Jacob saw them, he said, this is God's host. And he called the name of the place Mahamian. I may have mispronounced that. You know what? I had never read this this verse. I never remember reading this. I always knew Jacob wrestled with uh, with the angel. But I didn't know that before he met that angel, he met a whole host of angels. I never read that before. I was like, wow. And the angels of God met him. And he came upon him. And I wondered, why did God send his angels to meet Jacob? And so I believe they were there just to let him know everything is going to be okay. And I believe the Lord will, the Holy Spirit is a comforter. He will comfort you and just say, hey, it's going to be okay. Don't worry about it. I got you. You're going to go through some tough times, but it's going to be okay. So I wanted to bring that point out. Uh, just to be ready, uh, just to carry up here, verse 20 of chapter 32 my point is to be ready to make things right in 2019, to own up to your mistakes. And uh, we know that Jacob had stole his brother's birthright. Now, this is when Jacob, he left there, but he was also coming to meet Esau, his brother. That he, you know, he did him wrong. He did him bad. He was embarrassed about it. So be ready to make things right. Joseph, Jacob was embarrassed, but he knew he was meeting Esau. He thought Esau was going to kill him because he did him dirty. He did him wrong, and he knew he did. So he needed to own up to those mistakes. And what he did, uh, he, you know, sent him presents, sent him gifts, and sent his family in front of him. He still kind of <laughs> had some ways there. He, How are you going to send the women and children out, and then you're going to come last in case y'all get killed? I'm like, well, you should have went first. But he sent them first because he was afraid. But him and Esau made up. Esau didn't even kill him. He's like, man, it's, it's okay. He hugged him. He kissed him. Uh, they went their way. So be ready to make things right. Sometimes if you got any bitterness left over in your heart, any anger left over in your spirit, it's time to let it go. Sometimes people, are, they already dead and gone, and we're still holding on to spiritual baggage for people that are dead or that, that they're dead to you, they're no longer part of your life, and we're still holding on to things from our past. 2019 is time to let that go. Be ready to let it go. No matter when it happened, how painful it was, let it go. In verse 30, my point was from that, we must all have our own life-changing experience. And as that's the chapter, the verse where Jacob wrestled with, now the Bible says the man, but we believe it was the angel of the Lord because he blessed them. And so he wrestled, some people believe it was Jesus. I'm not a theologian, but he wrestled with, with the Lord. Let's just say that he wrestled with God's host, so he wrestled with the Lord. And he had a life-changing experience. The the angel or the Lord hit him in the thigh, and he he limped from that point on. And so my point was, we will all have our own life-changing experience. We'll come to a point where it's not just what Mama told you about God, it's not just what your daddy taught you, but you will walk through some hard things in life, your own self. Where Mama's not there, Daddy's not there. I mean, stuff that you walk through yourself. That you know, surely the Lord has delivered me. You may never tell anybody about it because you probably wasn't supposed to be in the first place. No one may ever, but well, never hear your testimony, at least not all of it. Y'all know we don't tell our whole testimony anyway. We're going to tell the, the part of it. But we don't tell 100% of what really happened. Only God knows. But we have our own life changing experience where we know what we're talking about for sure. Not just preaching someone else's message. Or preach what we heard, but I mean, you walk through the stuff, honey, where you like, I know what I'm talking about. And the thing I like about God, when He leads you through these experiences, you don't come through broken, you don't come through uh, disgusted, you don't come through all tore up. But when you come out of trials and tribulations, you come through with power, you come through with anointing, and you come through with, with a weight of glory that God puts on you for going through it and then coming out of it. We walk through the valley of the shadow of death. You don't stay in it, but you just keep on walking. And that's my encouragement to you tonight. No matter what you're going through, don't stop in it. Don't settle in it. Don't break down. You keep on walking through it. If you've got to limp through it, if 
you got to cry through whatever you're going through, if you got to stand on the word through it and, and call your prayer partner every day, all day, until it's finally out of your spirit. Do whatever you need to do, but you keep walking and do not stop. And my title was, it was readiness, but it was, it was also being led by the spirit. And my last verse is John 16 and 13, one of my favorite ones. St. John 16 and 13. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. I love the Holy Ghost because he will show you. Nothing is going to take you by surprise in 2019. He will show you. He will show you things to come. If you get an inkling, he may give you a word. You may have a dream, something. But if it's really big, you're not going to be completely shocked by it because the Holy Spirit in you, he already knew what's going to happen. He's going to keep you calm. He's going to say, don't lose your head about it. I got you. He will show you things to come. That's what all those dreams and visions are, where you see yourself doing this or you see yourself doing that. And you're like, the Lord, I'm not doing that yet. That's because it's going to happen. It shall come to pass. And if I had a microphone, I'd be hollering. It shall come to pass. It may not have happened yet, but if God promised you, God cannot lie. It shall come to pass. So you keep on walking. You keep on being led by that spirit of truth. The Holy Spirit will not lie. And just like God led Jacob to go through, to go back home, he told him exactly where to go and what to do in that situation. And the Lord will tell you where to go and what to do no matter what situation you're in. The Spirit of Truth will lead you. He will guide you and he will sustain you. So that's what the Lord put on my heart tonight. And thank y'all for letting me share that. I pray you were blessed by that tonight. Amen. I yield. Amen. 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 To God be the glory. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Um, Father, we thank you for this vessel on tonight and everything that she poured out to your people. And we thank you, Lord, in the majestic name of Jesus, that what she have poured out into your people, oh God, that you will pour back into her a hundredfold. We thank you for her faithfulness and boldness and even her diligently, oh God, her diligence. Uh, diligence, oh God, and that God, because of that, oh God, that you will greatly reward her. Continue to strengthen her, oh God, and we thank you for opening up doors that no man can shut, and we thank you, oh God, for the advancement of the ministry that you have placed on the inside of her. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Um, People of God, the line is open. We're going to open up the lines. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Um, As we do have our iron sharpening iron moment, um, dynamic people of God, hallelujah. Um, also encouraging the dynamic woman of God and the word, amen, that she brought forth tonight in our ear gates, amen, in the majestic name of amen. Jesus, the line is open, people of God. Amen. I want to say that I enjoyed it. I am her mama. Thank you, mommy. That's my mother. <laughs> Hi, Mom. Hi. (laughs) I want to say that was a beautiful message, and I was just listening to her, and I was thinking about how that when she told about the part where she was kidnapped and, uh, you know, absolutely Mm -hmm. raped while she was in college, uh, and after a while, the Lord gave me a dream, and he said, and Joseph... The Lord warned Joseph in a dream to take Mary and the young child and flee into Egypt. And he showed me that the guy was still searching for her on the campus. And I was running with her and trying to hide her and all. Well, that was so plain what he was letting me know. Go and get her out of college. Go and get her. He's still looking for her, searching for her. Mm-hmm. You know, I, so I, I thank God because the Lord always warned us like I was. Listen to her. She's learned a great, great lesson. And to warn mm-hmm. other young ladies, you know, just different things from that lesson she learned, you know, not to be so trusting. And uh, mm-hmm. that was one lesson throughout her ordeal. And uh, she was talking about how Rachel, well, you know, brought really when she stole her her father-in-law's idols. Uh, that Then uh, she brought in a curse 
into her mm-hmm. house. A cursed thing. And a lot of people have things in their house homes right now. We could really mm-hmm. write a book, my family, on things where people brought into their home that brought on a curse. And some of them have already literally died from mm-hmm. bringing the cursed thing. And, and a lot of people don't know about this. Mm-hmm. Bringing cursed items in their house. And so uh, it, that's, that's a good lesson right there and a big lesson. And mm-hmm. it's an eye-opener if a lot of people really pay attention. God always warns his children. Amen. You know, and I, I'm listening to a lot of people lately that I felt like I would do this and I felt like that. And, and, and I said, well, why didn't you obey that? You know, we all get the inward witness, a check mm-hmm. from the Holy Spirit not to do something and not to go somewhere but but you know it's muted just just not listening like they should but i tell you what dynamic people. this is the last day dynamic people of god we want to just thank you for joining us on tonight and we're going to go tonight in our love joy peace favor and the anointing of our most holy savior who is none other than jesus christ and it is in his most holy and majestic name that we've convened an intercession and we have been empowered. Amen, amen, and amen. To God be the absolute glory. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah.